What is up, guys? What is up, readers? Both gentlemen and women. Welcome back to another episode. Hold on, let me get this right. Another episode of Joseph's Book Reviews, all right? So today we got James Patterson, When the Wind Blows. So James Patterson, he's a pretty controversial author. I mean, he's one of the richest authors in the game, like top three for sure, richest Um He's got a shit ton of bread. He's made a ton of money. He started in, I think, the early... No, late 80s, early 90s is when he kind of, like, rose up to fame. He, he originally worked in marketing. Um, So when he started... He left marketing, and then he started writing novels. And he developed this style, or shall I say... He's not the only one that does it, but he popularized it. Where... He writes super short chapters, like three pages. And so in a book like this, it's like 400 pages total or something. So you end up having like 115 chapters around there of just really quick chapters. Each one, it's like three pages. It ends in like a little cliffhanger, right? And um, a lot of people really like that style because it's very smooth. It... it it makes it seem like it goes fast. Um, a lot of people like that. A lot of people don't like it as well because, especially after reading this book, I can see why some people don't like it. It feels kind of cheap sometimes. Especially, it seems like sometimes he's just ending a chapter at a point that doesn't feel like it should be an ending of a chapter, you know? It feels so forced. So there were some chapters where I'm like, why did you end it there? Like, it feels unnatural. Um, and, you know, he's also really controversial because, especially nowadays, as his career has um, come along, he publishes so many books a year. I think it was like last year or something, he published 30 books. And people are like, how the hell are you able to do that, man? And the reason is... He's not. <laughs> he doesn't write these books. You know, basically someone else writes them. And then he'll edit it, you know, fix a few kinks. And then slap his name on it. It's a brand name, basically. So he's not even writing his own books anymore. And if he is, it's hard to tell which ones he actually wrote, which ones he didn't write. Um, so this one, it's actually pretty old. Let me see when it was published real quick. 1999, 1999, um, so I want to say he actually did write this one, okay, because it was back in the day, um, but, you know, if you, if I'm wrong, then let me know in the comments, but pretty sure he actually wrote this one, so he's super controversial, a lot of people don't like him for that, and, but, he, you know, I missed, I missed this whole COVID-19 thing, he did actually um, donate $500,000 to independent bookstores around the country to try and keep them alive so they can survive amidst this crisis. Um, so that's a great thing, you know. So that makes me think more positively about him, even though, you know, he doesn't write his own books. So the reader in me, the writer in me, you know, I, I can't agree with that. I can't support that. But at the same time, he's he's made a ton of money. He's a businessman. And he's using a lot of that money for good things. So, you know, he's super controversial. Now, regarding this book specifically, it was disappointing. It was disappointing. It's, it's not that good. Um, it starts off strong. And I was excited for it. Basically, it's about uh, a veterinarian who lives outside Denver, Colorado, in the wilderness in uh, Colorado. And she's a veterinarian at a small town she's like the only veterinarian in the town and um her husband died she's a widow she meets this new guy that wants to live in her cabin on her property who ends up being an fbi agent he's covering this case and basically he's covering this case which involves human experiments so basically there are these you know really cliche uh, mad scientists in the small town that are experimenting on children and developing them in labs to give them mutations. So basically, one of the main characters, her name is Max, she's a 12 year old girl, and she has wings, she can fly. And um, 
it's kind of cool at first, but it just starts to... I guess the problem with this book is that it feels very shallow. It's There's not many stakes involved. You know that the good guys are going to win. Uh, there's no deep themes or anything. Uh, there's a ton of cliches. There's a ton of telling um, and not showing. Which, you know, if you're a creative writing student, you know that you need to show more than you can tell. I don't agree that you always should show always should show um, instead of tell you know sometimes it's alright to tell but this book only tells it feels like sometimes um, for example like uh, he, he uses the word beautiful to describe things to describe things so much he's gotta use the word beautiful in this book dozens of times she was so beautiful. Her wings were so beautiful. The sunset was beautiful. It's like, dude, can you describe it? Why is it beautiful? How is it beautiful? So that can get kind of cringy when you're reading this. Another cringy part is that the main character, Franny, who's the veterinarian, she cries so much in this book. She cries all the time. You know, it starts to feel like her reaction to everything is tears falling down her cheek. And it becomes so irritating um you know i'm not against characters crying it's normal sometimes but when your character cries so much everything it just is so irritating you know you're just like ah stop it it makes you want to stop reading but and there were times when i just wanted to stop reading this book you know um but i i forced myself i want to do the review about it and so i gave my time to this book i'm gonna give an honest review and talk about why i don't like it you know so let's go into some quotes real quick from the book, um, you know, I always do three quotes from each book. So let's go to this one. Um, oh, here. So here's an example about how Patterson will be so telly in the way he describes things. Okay. I'm so sorry, I said. Now I felt so guilty about everything. Right from the first time I'd ever seen him. I had been all wrong about Kit Harrison, and it made me feel bad. Uh, Kit Harrison's the FBI agent who, you know, romantic fling between her and her and Kit. And, uh, yeah, so that's an example of her just saying, I felt bad. It's like, dude, you're not supposed to just say, I felt bad. Especially if it's not even dialogue. It's just her talking inside her head to the reader. It's just so, I guess, childish. Which brings me to another point about this book is that it seems so, the tone is not consistent. At some points, it'll seem very childish, um, you know, with quotes like that or with, you know, Max, the little winged girl saying like, let's kick butt. But then, you know, the next chapter, you know, they, uh, uh, Franny and Kit have sex and it's like described in, you know, slightly graphic detail. So it was like, whoa, or like, um, you know, a graphic scene of violence happens. So it's just really like the tone doesn't make sense because, you know, certain chapters it's like oddly characters are censoring their cursing they'll say freaking um and then you know 10 chapters after that they'll say the actual f word so the tone is so wobbly of like is it childish is it meant for you know housewives is it meant for you know readers that want a deep experience it's all over the place and uh this book really feels like it was just made on the fly like there was not a lot of deep thought put into it. You can tell that Patterson researched uh, a lot of scientific stuff like about amoebas and biology, which is nice. That's a nice touch I do like. But when it comes to the plot, um, things will just come up with no foreshadowing at all. Like um, Franny will say, and then we went to my sister's house for refuge but her sister hasn't even been mentioned at all in the book. And this is like, you know, 300 pages in. And it's just like, what the hell? Is he just making this up? You know, how am I supposed to know about this random doctor that she sees and says that she used to work with? It's like, dude, the book's almost over. Like, you need to mention those things earlier. You need to introduce that character earlier. So, yeah, guys, I don't want to rant uh, super hard. Let's go to the next, next quote. Um, ba 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 ba. 
Okay, here's an example of an inappropriate chapter ending. Um, okay, Max pushed open another door. There was a soft clicking sound. Were they photographing us? My heart was still pounding. I felt tired. Things were getting a little blurry. Where was Kit? Was he okay? This is where I work, Matt announced. It's usually full of doctors. And then the chapter ends. It's like, okay, she said it's usually full of doctors. How is that an appropriate chapter ending? The chapter is only two pages. So it, it's it's really weird like that. Uh, let's go to the next the next um, quote, guys. Okay, guys, so the next quote is an example of something I actually do like about the book is that Patterson's really good at describing scenery um, without overdoing it, you know? Um, so he describes this small town vibe in the mountains. Uh, it's really quite nice, beautiful. Here it is. There was a stream less than 100 yards from camp. I strung a line on the portable fishing rod I carry in my pack. The stream was bubbling and boiling down the rocks. It eddied into a little pool I knew from another time up here. So it's just nice. And then he goes on to describe like fishing. And that's a part of the book that I did like was the descriptions of this, you know, um, wilderness, small town. I'm a sucker for small town stories and things like that. So <clears throat> I did like that aspect. But overall, the book is really shallow. It's kind of like you ever see Transformers franchise, the movies? You know, they're decently enjoyable, but they're shallow. There's nothing deep about them. They're, they're just, like, fun, like popcorn. If you could describe a book like that, it's this. You know, the premise, it could have done way more with the premise, but it ended up being kind of like, I don't know. I guess the best word I can describe it is shallow. So, yeah, guys, that's my thought. That's my thoughts on uh, James Patterson's When the Wind Blows. Um... You know, if you just want an easy read, you don't read that much, check it out. It's pretty decent, but, you know, again, not great. Not even good, in my opinion. But, yeah, guys, I'll smile you on the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, keep reading.